Hi, Mai. Pleasure is mine. Let's see how it goes. You should, you should, can you speak up? Your voice is low or speak closer to your mic. Uh, okay, yeah, better. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you get inside a room? All right, okay. So, uh, 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 just to give the audience mm -hmm. an idea, can you uh, uh, give us a brief about yourself and walk us through your formal education? My education, yeah? All right. Yeah. So, Life brief to introduce... Education. Yeah, yeah, to introduce, my name is Sunil. I'm 37. I'm currently working with HSBC UK. I have been in UK for about three years now. Uh, it all started back in India, in Vizag. I had my schooling completed in Vizag uh, in a in school name called St. John's. And that after that, I've done my college in Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya, uh, with uh, physics and computer science. And then I just have completed graduation. So that is that is what only I have as my, what we say, ac academic qualifications. And then, my corporate, what we say, journey started, I think, in 20, 2006. Started with, uh, not sure if you guys have heard, there is a company called Hinducha Technologies. They used to give customer support to your key mobile service providers by then, which is Airtel, Vodafone idea. So I was picked up for Etel Postpaid. So I've started my career with Etel Postpaid as a customer service executive. I, that was for a 5,000 per month salary. And uh, that, that was in Hyderabad. So basically I was working for Hinduja and client was Etel. So once the journey started, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know. I had spent only a year with them. After that, because I, my proper is from Vizag, I, and again, unfortunately, HSPC is not there in Vizag anymore, which is very sad. But they were very key players and only, what we say, reputed MNC, multinational company, in Vizag, where I was born and brought up and had my schooling and my, all my education was in Vizag. So, it was like anyone who was dreaming to start their career. Um, so HSBC was the one and was the best option available at that time in Vizag. So obviously I'm also no different. So whenever I used to pass through that building, uh, so for the folks who are familiar with Vizag, it's in Seripuram, it's the heart of the city. It's very close to beach. So whenever we used to go that, you know, uh, what we say via that route and whenever I used to see that office like any other person I always has that very strong zeal that you know I should someday step into this office and at least you know see how this corporate world works like you know because we we get to see we get to hear a lot of things from my seniors or anybody that because it was a boom at that time right corporate corporate culture was picking up and so obviously person like me who has very high ambitions would like to taste or at least witness that. So probably, you know, 
uh, so whenever I used to go that way, so I used to see that you no, know, we need to see what we need to learn. Obviously, nobody has, you know, nobody knows or nobody has everything that they need at that time. So we should know what we are lacking for, what we need to do to reach those targets. I don't believe in putting targets. I always do, like because I'm in agile world. It's always breaking into pieces, you know, small, small chunks. So I always have short-term goals and put everything to reach that goal. And once we reach there, set another one. Could be small one, could be career-wise. It could be anything. So I'm always, uh, you know, a guy with that agile methodology. Knowing and unknowingly, that's how it was there right from beginning. Now we have that terminology you know, tagged as agile. Everything should be agile. So we'll talk about it a little later in the game. But yeah, that's how it all started. So I saw the building and obviously it, it looks very, very cool from outside. I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's a, I don't know if you know, it's called Hexagon House because from the top, if you see, yeah, HSBC building is called Hexagon House because you know the hexagon symbol, right? That's yeah, what the HSBC yeah, logo yeah. is. The yeah. building architecture is built in that way. So mm -hmm. it looks very cool. So I always used to feel that, no, I should get in. So so uh, not only uh, what we say, thinking or feeling, you know, putting a goal, I started working towards it. Like, you know, uh, first thing, first and foremost, what we lack is communication skills, obviously with a corporate giant. Uh, we would definitely need at least basic uh, you know, communication skills, at least to sit and talk in an interview, right? Leave about any interactions and how the communication will build up. That's a different story. But at least to enter the building, we need to have the basic communications, right? So that's how it all started. So I started working on, I, you know, I've spent some, um, you know, uh, money to learn, get cope up with those basic communication skills as well. Because... All that I had in mind was to get a job in HSBC. That was the only thing that I had. Nothing, nothing else was excite, exciting me apart from getting a role there. So that's how it started. So if, uh, if, you know, step by step, of course, our education would help. Sorry, what was that? Step by step, you have grown to where you are now. Yeah, I, I'll talk about it. See, I, I was telling, right, uh, 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 being standing in front of the building, right, yeah. back in 2004, yeah, mm -hmm. 2004, yeah, yeah, 2004, I was standing in front of the building, I was just dreaming that, you know, I should just get into this building, that's it, I should work for this. Whatever. And, yeah, cut to 2020, 19, or let's say 2022, currently, I'm working... Currently, my headcount is based out of in headquarters of HSBC. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, just to let you know, HSBC headquarters is based out in London, yeah. and I currently work for London headquarters. So now you can imagine how long and how interesting the journey would have been uh, from a guy who was just dreaming to get into a small, uh, what we call GSE, which is Global Service Centers. That's how HSBC spread across all Asian countries or other countries where they set up GSCs, Global Service Centers, which support HSBC um, customer base, internal. HSBC doesn't do any consultings, like, you know, we don't have any external clients because HSBC is, it's in itself has a big customer base and all the people who work for HSBC support HSBC, could be HSBC customers, HSBC employees, any, anything. It's just, just HSBC, no, no external clients, right? So that's 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 the interesting journey that started way back in 2004 by looking at the building. And 2022, I am currently working in the headquarters of the same company. So which is very good, feels that good vibe. But uh, trust me, that was not that that was not an easy journey, right? Yeah, so unlike, obviously, it's uh, every profession, every role has its own, what we say, um, it comes with its own advantages and disadvantages, everything uh, you need to evolve, you need to learn, you need to have a vision, you need to have a goal. But like I said, I'm never a guy to have a long-term goal. I always believe in short-term goals. It could be just a 30 day, four week, four weeks old goal or probably a one year after two years, what is it that I want to be? That's how I always used to work because 
I don't want to make things complex because making things complex would make me nervous. I will not be able to uh, work towards my goal if I am nervous. Obviously, it's, it's the case with everyone, right? Yeah. But I am little more of it because I know I get very cautious. So the best option, some nice gentleman told me when I was very young that you know, so if you are thinking that it might hamper your progress, then why why don't you instead of making it complex, just take the complex things and divide it into small pieces and make it easier. right it it made more sense now it is making more sense now but at that time even that advice was a bouncer for me because obviously we don't know the whole so with all that said right the fun began in 2007 feb that's when my journey with the htmt the hinduja technologies ended in jan 20 2007 and i started working with hsbc back in vizag office in feb 2007 i think 13th feb 13th so i i have begun my career as a manual tester again i don't know it was uh, luck or because generally hsbc employees when they started their career in wisag they always were in roles of customer service executive where like calls or something but again uh, my i was fortunate that you know when i went to the interview they were they set up a small team who yeah. they wanted to have their internal systems to be tested manually so they wanted a small chunk of people who have this computer uh, as part of their education qualification and also who are open to learn and are very active right so that's how i landed that role so it all started as a manual tester in feb 2007 initially it was very challenging right you know because new world corporate world everything was streamlined and my god uh, so the day I, when i entered the building for giving the interview it it was never the case of you know i've never seen such what we say the hospitality right even the way they received the the way they you know communicated they were explaining how the process would work So I was like everybody was stood up on the dais and they were talking. Everybody seemed to be a role model to me because I was like, okay, so this is how you need to talk. This is how you need to carry yourself. This is how you need to smile, right, when you're talking. There are a lot of things which we don't know. Which we that that's the basic problem I have with the current education system. Probably I'm not sure current, but the education system that I had when I was studying in India. that you know, there are a lot of other things the practical things that needs to be taught in school which we were learning struggling and learning when we started work right fortunately that's not the case with the younger generation now because we are there or the schools also the the curriculum also evolved now they started including some what we say role plays or something like that yeah. I, i when i interact with my young cousins so they tell me that like, you know what's actually happening in school they do role plays they do they do what we say group discussions and all which were like whenever we heard that group discussion word itself in back in 2000 21 it is a fear because yeah, right. first of all we need to talk in front of you know, a bunch of people yeah so we should have we should get over the fear of the stage fear and then we need to talk properly we need to try we should actually try to what we say execute what was there uh, in in the mind and communicate it properly which was a definitely a challenge i probably i shouldn't generalize it but it is let let's stick to that so uh, it was a challenge to me right because yeah. i know i know where i know that is something that i need to work on so every day is a learning every yeah. day is a learning you can learn from anyone that i always look up people i always learn whatever they are doing like for example how they communicate to as simple as that i think you know most of you have known me i started you know driving that point that you know, let's talk in english let's use let's let's not not to belittle our regional languages or our mother tongue but knowing the how the world is evolving around us and we shouldn't be lagging behind or we shouldn't be in a queue somewhere just because we are not able to communicate properly yeah right so that's how all started because that's what i've seen in the in my office the way they 
the way they were communicating, the kind of words they were using, you know, the pronunciations, the uses of words. That's a learning, right? Slowly. So that's how it all it all began. That's my what we say in a nutshell. I think for about ten minutes I've been talking. So this yeah. is how this is what it is. So you let me know what what do you want to know, and I would love to talk about. I think our community that is watching this will agree to your point that every day is a learning, and you get to learn a lot of things. That's what uh, yeah. our community does. We have a community of uh, people who are interested in various topics, and they keep sharing the information. And that's how our community and I especially get to learn from other people. And I think uh, learning has no age factor. You can learn from anyone at any given True. age. Okay. True. The day you stop learning, right? That's that 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 is the day where you will stop growing. Right? Yeah. It could be any knowledge. So, your uh, let me give a small piece of advice. Right? How I look at things as my perspective is, when a group of people are talking, right? It could be any topic. could be technology it could be movies it could be it could be anything what i feel is you should know something about it so yeah. that you can part you can be part of that conversation you need not be a great contributor to that conversation but at least try and listen to what's actually happening so that's the reason it's always good to be open see what's actually happening around it might not interest you but just know what it is right for example I don't know A B C of what is like C C plus plus core Java, Java. I don't know S Q L queries. I don't know, but that's what I hear. Uh, people who are in a better position, right? Uh, they were. It's it's not about the monetary part, right? Not talking of the monetary part. The other part, like you know how they were carrying themselves, the kind of respect that they were getting from the you know the local yeah. community, yeah. could be family, friends. the kind of attention that they were getting right when they were trying to speak everybody was just listening to them yeah which is which is very good to feel right if you if you are there in the, their shoes you'll you would love, definitely want that right if you're speaking something you would love to have people listen to you yeah. or at least leave about if they listen and they take that advice or if you're advising something or if you're saying something leave about whether they take it seriously or not but at least they, if you somebody is listening to you that gives a lot of confidence that gives good feel that gives good positive vibe to you that's what that is what i was actually happening with one set of people right so i was just looking at them and just thinking what is it that they have that i don't have what is it that i need to learn again it it need not be so extensive comprehensive learning like it could be a very small thing right uh, so it's just that you need to be part of the game so as long as you're part of the game and you are swimming with them even if you are not a pro you if because you need to live you need to go to the other side of the lake you will swim yeah you will pick up the pace yeah. it might take some time for people it might be taking a longer time for people but you are there in the game as long as you are in the water you are in yeah. the game yeah you need to have something interesting happening in the life so i mean that's how i look at uh, things so that's how that's how it should be So yeah, the day you stop learning, that's the day you are you you'll stop growing. Yeah. You need you need you shouldn't be confined to a small uh, place. What we say there is something called right, like you know, you shouldn't be a um, what we say the frog in that well, yeah. right? Yeah. There is frog yeah frog. yeah there is a lot of things happening. You do not be pro at everything, so that's yeah. what I believe. You do not be pro at everything, but at least know what it is, that's yeah. it, so that. you when somebody tells you it shouldn't be greek it should not be a greek and latin for you you should at least you should make you should sense. be able to relate yeah. yeah you should be able to relate it should make sense to you then you it will it will it will make you happy or it will make you feel good uh yeah yeah i i i agree to you and uh, it's always good to move with people that have more knowledge compared to you and you cannot learn everything from the internet you have to look at other people's mistakes or other people imagine it was not that, that aggressive uh, uh, internet back back then right so yeah. only only way where you can learn is by interacting with people, people yeah. right and you should not you should leave that inferiority complex that you know uh, what we say ego or whatever it is yeah. just yeah. put that aside if you want to evolve if you want to learn then this that is the only way yeah. interact open up and observe others and learn 
I think that should that should help. When you learn it, there is the rest of the story, right? You know, you have to implement, execute that as well. I mean, I keep using this word because I'm from that world, like you know, testing world. So testing execute, part. observe that that comes. So, but uh, you know, forgive me for that. But I'm what I'm trying to say is, you know, learning is one part of the story or one side of the coin. If you yeah. don't implement that in your day-to-day -day life, that learning is of no use. Either you implement it, or you spread it, or you you know explain that to more people so that at least it's not confined to you it's just it's just it's, it's like a flow right it came to you it's going from you to others spread that's how knowledge. it should be spread yeah that's knowledge. how yeah knowledge or the piece of information that you have it could be whatever it might be you just spread it you just let others know because someone in that group might be like you who would be interested to know like you right i really appreciate that because you have come a long way I've seen. We will talk about that at the later, uh, probably towards the fag end of this this session. Okay. I would like to take like five ten minutes, and I would like to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now to the audience. You are currently a business analyst at HSBC headquarters in London, right? Correct. So I'm currently uh, working as a digital business analyst. Okay. Right. This is a business analyst role. Like officially, this role is probably uh, eight months because before this, like I said, my journey started in 2007 as a tester and I have actually moved to this role as a test manager. So I've, so I've seen roles from tester, test lead, um, uh, what we say, uh, test analyst, then test manager, then now it is BA. So half of my professional life is what entirely my professional life is all about testing, yes. right? Could be manual testing. Uh, so that, we will talk about that. But yeah, currently I'm managing uh, as a digital business analyst. There is a small, what we say, pilot kind of thing that is started by HSBC mm -hmm. for commercial banking, right? You know, commercial banking is like your commercial world, yeah. right? So for small business banking people in Europe where they do a turnover of 2 million a year, yeah. we thought that, you know, we have to pick that chunk of people, that small piece, that that component is called small business banking, SBB. Yes. We have taken that world and what HSBC has done is, there is no physical branches for anyone in for those customers. It's all digital because with that word itself, right? you should be able to relate. The world is going towards, you, it could, could be the COVID scenario that happened in last years. So everyone is actually trying to see what can be done without a physical place, right? Most in online platforms, what can be done without compromising on the quality of the product that we're giving to the customer. Okay. So that way the thought came that, you know, we should give a digital platform for those customers where they will not have any physical branches. They cannot, even if they walk up to any branch, their data will not be there because they purely are on digital platforms, meaning their onboarding. When I say onboarding, how they come into the bank will be done like you know if you go into if you go into a bank you fill a form for opening an account right all that we automated it's all digital so either they can go get it on get it done on a website or we have mobile apps like ios and android they can enroll themselves on those apps directly so their journey with the bank right from the day they open the account and the products that we give like loans Overdrafts, like all these facilities will be managed only digitally, only no physical. Yeah. So I am working for that stream. So I am a business analyst where my job is to connect the business, right? Speak to them, understand what they want, mm -hmm. convert that into something called a document, which can be understood by a technical guy. We call the document as business requirement document, okay. okay? So I translate what business needs into a document, BRD, and which is actually something that our development, developer is like, who's the one who's gonna develop, develop this product yeah, and the, the, the ask of the business. So they can understand what is written in the document, right? So I have to write into a language where it, it is easily understood by the developers so that they build that code, right? They build that, uh, uh, let's say my business wants to have uh, want to build a house, okay? 
let just in layman terms so that because i know we might have different people seeing this right so they should understand so let's say my business wants a house to they want just house okay they just need a garden uh, you know and a house it should be double store it should have uh, that's as a business or as someone who needs a house this is what at a high level he needs okay it should be two floors and i i said you know i want a i want a pool i want a garden i want a small play, play area for my kids to play i want some place to park my car this is my requirement right okay. now as a ba what he will do is he will take this up to the people who construct the you know the builders so i'll go to the builders i'll tell them that no see this is the place Requirement. now yeah i design it so i'll just give them okay this is how the living area should be this is how the bedroom should be okay this is how anyone who is entering the house should come this way like you know this there there should be a door here this is how he should enter once he enters this there should be a place where he can sit okay and how he should enter into the other bedrooms and kitchen i should tell them that you know okay put a door here so that from living room they enter the bedroom like this there should be staircase to go from uh, inside the house to the second floor because if i don't tell them where the staircase should be as a builder i can build staircase outside my house yeah. right yeah. like you know i'll put the staircase outside where somebody can come and he can yeah, because the end goal is you said you said two floors i built yeah. two floors yeah. and you said uh, you know the customer should be able to get inside both the floors first one is i'll go from the door which i've constructed down second thing is i'll take the stairs from the outside yeah. right because that's what customer wanted right so if we don't clearly tell that you know no the staircase should be inside it should start from here once you land on you know on the second floor where the other bedroom these are the all the details that a ba should understand and put in the document that because builder will not use their logic sense or common sense even if they have one they shouldn't use it because they are bound to follow what the requirement says right it is as good as you having a signal post and you tell them that no if there is a green you should go if there is a red you should stop, stop. Yeah. so if they see red they should go doesn't matter if somebody is crossing the door because we didn't tell them that you know they should also stop when somebody is crossing the road after they see a green signal you know what i mean right yeah. for example there is a signal the bus is going the signal is green we told them that no once it is green you just go yeah. but there might be some smart people like rishi or sunil that you know they don't care about the red and blue they just cross the road then they are knocked off and it's not their fault because we are our requirement is not clear so that's a very important role that a ba does right we are the bridge between the business and the technical team it could be developers it could be testers anyone so that we are the bridge so our bridge should be very strong because we should understand what customers requirement are and we should deliver you know put it in a proper documentation for the development team that's what i i am currently doing okay. and as a test manager apart from this once the build is complete i also make sure that with my testers i test it whether it's meeting my business requirement or not whatever they asked which is meeting or not because i have that experience so i just handle end to end of the project i work closely with the pm project manager because project manager tends to like again coming back to the example of house he takes care of the entire building right from the stone laid till handing over the keys is the responsibility of the project manager i work very closely with the project manager and we deliver what the customer wants so that's that's what i'm currently doing as a ba okay so that's an important process and i would like to know some of the tools that you guys use in this process what in business analysis yeah okay so first and foremost right you need like i said uh, we have proper documentation Pro predominantly again it differs from organization to organization yeah. but to manage all the user stories okay uh, what is a user story is you know um we the the requirements we combine them we we follow agile methodology right like i was i was talking about this a while back right yeah. so every organization right now is moving towards or ad adapting agile methodology okay, yeah. right so what it is instead of a traditional waterfall model 
we are going agile where the entire ask will be divided into different portions Segments. and yeah separate sprints and we deliver sprint wise that's one part of it the other part is one sprint where we are actually deploying the code parallel in there will be another sprint where there will be requirement gathering happening parallel there will be another sprint where there is there will be testing happening so lot of activities will run parallelly in this agile methodology so this way what will happen is the customer will instead of waiting for the complete product to come okay. let's say by the end of the project which again coming to your house example right he need not wait for 2 years to see the entire house yeah. that's a waterfall methodology if if we follow the agile methodology we will first give him the living room right so that in 6 months he can get into his house he is yeah. there right so that's how we follow agile methodologies sorry for deviating from the question so i'm just trying to relate all this right these are all yeah. these are all important in a day's mm-hmm. life for a for a ba right then so the tools that we currently use we predominantly use jira right yeah. to store all our user stories jira is very very good tool which is very robust very very comprehensive where you can put your requirements there you can put your user stories there you can once the testing starts you can raise it you can raise a defects there your developers will be able to fix put the fixed details in it entire life cycle of a project can be managed in jira okay right we use ms access we use powerpoint to you know we use uh, word all these uh, microsoft tools we and we i mean it's exclusively for my role i also use google cloud platform gcp where this user base i was talking about at the small business banking for whom we are building a digital platform all the data we are currently using google plat- google cloud platform so all the data is stored in gcp okay. from which i take the raw data and make some sense out of it right again business anal- analyst role is also to analyze the data right, right. you yeah. you tell a story out of the data that you have yeah so i also do a monthly report to my senior management where i talk about that you know how many customers were onboarded in a month we, because we get the raw data from google platform in your yes, gcp right i take the data then we build a story around it like you know we take we try to talk make more sense out of it like you know how many customers were onboarded like onboarded in the sense how many customers have come into the bank how many customers out of them how many customers have taken which loan like you know and how many customers were able to get the loan straight away like you know we call that process called stp meaning straight through process where there is no other intervention the system takes a decision straight away based on the information that is given by the customer in the app let's for example as a customer i open ios app open iphone open the kinetic app i give all the details that is required like you know his basic address date of birth income whatever it is yeah, okay. whatever i need based on that data there is a logical algorithm that runs and it gives a decision straight away within like 7 seconds that's the current timeline as we speak today we are meeting like within 7 seconds a customer would get a decision based on the input he has given decision in the sense it could be approved or it could be referred mm-hmm. approved is like straight through process straight away with all the information that is given if system feels that it's clean it will approve and you are into the bank right but there might be few instances where the system thinks that you no know, we might need some additional data or mm-hmm. it might need some other like we need to rely on the credit platforms to see how is doing credit you know with other things and all those will be referred right so that's how the journeys would be captured so our reports will so because as a senior management i should know how many we are how many cases are actually declining right yeah. so that i need to know what can be done to make it you know make it like you know what is the percentage if let's for example 60% of the customers that have come in in last one month we have seen that they are declined so yeah. for, when we are saying declined again we have will further drill down like what are the reasons reasons yeah uh, how system works is no we always tag when we decline something we always tag to a reason right decline reason or we say decline reason codes or let's say some code will will tag it as some code so that we can analyze analyze we, yeah so which which is the top top three reasons that are that we have where most of the customers are getting declined okay. right 
if you see that's a story that we're trying to build to the senior management at the end of the month so that we know where we need to stress in the next coming coming months to build our user base right that's the end goal right we need as many customers as possible to come into the bank or into the app and start using our platform so if they are getting declined straight away by the app we should know why that app is declining them like what kind of reasons so if you know that then we'll try to see what can be done to improve so for that again a business analyst role is very key because like like i was saying right you you have the data in hand you analyze it you make some sense out of it you build a story around it and you come to a conclusion that okay if we target blah 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 these three points i think the user base from last three months probably we can hit another 6-7% high next month if we target that because these are the key contributors where we are, we are losing customers right i mean this is a classic example to very much related to my role but in general this is how you your mind should be right your you should be open you should start analyzing the data that you have in front of it and see what can be done to improve it that way as a person you will be evolved right you will learn a lot of things and you will also see uh, you you will be in a better position to judge where and you know what is it that next that you need to do to make sure that you you go uh, what we say to the next role what is it that you how how do you grow oh, that's so that's how it is so i know i have given a lot of gyan but to i could have just answered saying that you no know, we use microsoft tools we use google tools and we use zira but if you had some perspective to it that makes more sense i mean that's how i am so so you create a customer persona and then you uh, at the end of every month you look at the data that you have and then you figure out top 3 or 5 factors that are causing the customers to leave your company and then you work on them correct so we will see what what we can do it, it's it it is it it need not be always that it is something our mistake like for example because the app takes a decision based on the input that is given by the customer if his credit history is not good obviously we cannot have someone fraudster coming to the bank and you know use our fund so obviously we should be it's a very tricky situation but there might be a few cases where we can improvise like for example benefit of doubt can be still be given where we can allow the bank uh, the customer to come inside the bank then we can do the other parts where it is well less riskier because banking sector the financial sectors that i work it's very very tricky we should be very very careful with because it's it's always linked to linked to your monetary part and also it is linked to a, what we say reputation of the bank right and with so many banks coming up uh, like we have i don't know if you know few banks you know the in the financial sector the banks are tagged as high street banks local street banks like that right so any new newcomer in the banking world like idbc someone like we have someone idfc is a new one in india right so like um, so like so so we are one of the high street banks hsbc is, uh, is spread across the entire globe so any wrong step we do it will just blow out of proportion right the media will just blow, blow out of it so that's the reason it, we it's very much streamlined we should have make sure what we do how we interpret how we talk how what we put on social media we need to be very very careful with that because it has it will have its own replications around it uh, uh, can you give us one lesson that your job or your failures have taught you that has helped you reach where you are today <laughs> good one but i don't know if i've already uh, if i've actually overcome it but one thing that i've seen is uh, in fact there are there are two or three right I'll, I'll, if you ask me there are two three I'll, let me tell you one one um, start with try to have a proper documentation of what you're doing right documentation is really really important what you're doing where you you know you just track it i mean keep goals uh, and then work exactly you 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 come up with a small time table right you yeah. in like 30 day 60 day 90 day plans we call yeah. it in corporate world where you know you have a 30 day plan what is it that you want to achieve in the 30 days document it proper it 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 could be all in your thoughts but i'm saying put it on a paper put yeah. it on a ppt put it on a word 
it's it's as simple as that you just write it down which i've learned very very late in the game but it's never never late than ever right so it 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 always helps i've learned it very late but i've started practicing it very late but yeah that's that, that is something that you can start looking at put small small things just put it on the let's say for example i want to uh, you know get on a mount everest yeah. yeah that's my goal before i die i want to just climb mount everest or at least go to kanchenjunga mm-hmm. so just put it on the list yeah. then come up with a plan like you know which are the ones out of it that has achievable in next 30 days or like, for example i want to get a pmp certification project management certification or some business analyst related certification or uh, you know what if you some test i mean whatever which is relevant to your profession whatever which will be advantage you know helpful for your professional life or personal life build your communication skills whatever it might be have those 30 day plan try try to put a deadline for each of your goals right and then work towards it to show that you know that's one there try to have a documentation for everything that you you say that you hear from your clients document it right at least put in an email if you are if you are on a call with someone right you had a business call with your clients okay i'm ta- i'm just coming out of my role but i'm just telling i'm just setting the context right you your friends or clients when you have a word with your clients they say that no okay this is what i need once the call is done just draft meeting minutes right put in a emails and send it just to be sure that okay just to let you know these are the parties that were part of the call uh, uh, rishi said that this is what it is sunil said this is the commitment he has in so just draft the notes what the was discussed and what are the action points out of the discussion it could be any 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 informal discussion as well but just put in a email put in informally in, in a mail right because your your business or your client might be confused at a later stage that you no know, oh i thought when you explained that your again coming back to my example right? i thought i could go to my second floor inside my house yeah but you never clarified that you wanted you said that you know i should be able to climb up from a first floor to second floor yeah. so we have given the staircase outside so your purpose is served right i wanted to go from first floor to second floor which i can still do it from the staircase which is outside my house okay. but the customer says oh but i thought the staircase will be inside because i saw i, I saw it somewhere but you never told us yeah yeah I so that will really save you so, so you need to document it so that is one thing second thing is start saying no right don't pick up or take up things that you feel that you cannot deliver or you cannot say no to anyone that is asking for help see taking up things that you can do which you feel that you know the person needs it and you have that capability or caliber to help him which is good but that additional work that you're picking up because you are not able to say no to someone should not impact the things that are there currently on your plate right for example you have your own deadlines you have you have your commitment to deliver something by end of the month right just because someone who knew as your friend your good colleague or your boss it can, it can be just that somebody tells you that you no know, can you help can you do this as well when you when in, at, the, at the start of the career yeah pick it up because the the more work you do the more exposure you get that helps you however that should not that should justify the work that you already committed to deliver by end of the month right if you're picking up something and you're not able to deliver the ones that you're committed then you're not justifying for both us you are not able to justify the person who has asked for your help yeah. and you're not able to justify the work that you already committed which is a not a good thing trust me i struggled a lot because i cannot say no to anything someone pings me someone says that you know can you help can you do this can you pull a report can you do this can you do a quick ppt presentation on this yeah i can do it because i know how to do it and i've done that earlier okay. they have their own resources it doesn't mean that you know it doesn't mean that if you know something you can do or you have to do right then how will others learn from you how will your team learn if you that's a that's a quality of a leader right you need to step down and give opportunity to your team train them let them know what they need to do direct them they don't show them the direction but you just don't do it you just guide them you just you just be there to monitor but i uh, i feel because i'm like a, if my mindset is like you know 
I mean, like most of us, we feel that if I do that work myself, even though it take an additional hour, I'll do it with utmost quality. Mm -hmm. And I, because I have done it, I know I'll be able to deliver. It's not about, the I don't have trust on my team, but I feel that you know, I'll be able to do it quickly if I do it myself, yeah. instead of yeah. explaining it to someone and doing it. But if you want to grow as a, as a leader in, in an organization, or if you want to evolve in your role, right? It shouldn't always be the case where you are doing one-to-one -one delivery. Like, you, know, you have picked something, you deliver. It should be a team effort. So if you if there are three or four people reporting to you, then they'll be looking up to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have to, exactly, you have to drill down those to them. So you have, you have to give them opportunity to, to learn as well. To where you are, they also need to be there. So that means you have to give the opportunity to them. So you need to have the trust, at least, let them know that you know you trust them That's on their true. work and give that give that liberty right you do you come up with your ideas this is what i need you come up with your ideas and you deliver it i'm fine once you're done we can sit together and see what we can be done to improvise it but giving that uh, free hand to a team that boosts a lot of confidence so that's that's the second point that i've i've not been doing it for a long time and i picked up very late so if you ask me, these are the two things that you definitely need to okay. start working on. Then so, make your life. So simply putting it, uh, we need to have a, your first point says that we need to have a short term goal, long medium term goal and the long term goal. Long term and, goal, yeah. Uh, and your second point. And you document it. Yeah, and we document it. And your uh, second point, okay, document it is in the it's second a, point. Yeah, second point you, is you, having a uh, it's better to walk with the team than walking alone. Correct. Yeah, because that's how you grow and your team grows along so, with you. Yeah, obviously. You learn and... Or, or else, you know, you might succeed, succeed but yeah. at some point of time, if you look back... You will regret. You will, exactly. Because someone might tell you that, you know, you should have given the opportunity. How would yeah. we also grow like you? Yeah. So, yeah. until unless you uh, have the trust factor in them... See, obviously, they might they will make mistakes. You would have also done it, right? Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if there is no mentor in your life, then it's very hard. So you you try to be a mentor to someone on something that you are very, very good at. For example, if you're very good at, uh, let's say, art, okay, yeah. like singing, whatever is the strength that you have, if you're good at it, you try to be a mentor to someone. That, that gives good positive vibe to you. And it also helps someone. Okay. Uh, I have an interesting question for you uh, because mm -hmm. I, I am into this marketing startups and all that and you look at so much data and you talk to so many customers in a month and you talk to so many different mindset over a month. Stakeholders. I like, yeah, I would, like to, stakeholders. I would like to know if you were to start a business tomorrow, uh, leave all these jobs and you, if you were to start a business tomorrow, with the data that you have, what what is that one business that you will start? Which field is it related to? With the kind of data that I'm seeing right now, yeah. right? I would like to, I mean, this is again exclusive to my uh, my genre, yeah. right? Where, yeah. where what I'm seeing every day, I would like to start a consulting uh, firm, right? As yeah. a consultant okay. where i i work for a company right mm -hmm. i do i am not tagged to one 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 company right like i can give my services i i build up my own team yeah. right i'll have my data architects i'll, I'll have my data analysts i'll have my small chunk of developers i love my small uh, you know uh, set of like three or four people testers who are good at automation right automation so if i have a team like that i can give this consultants I can give the services, right? Where, or I can tell you that you know, instead of spending a bomb on your full-term employees, give sixty or seventy percent of the amount to us, yeah, and we will deliver it because I see the customer base, right? I am seeing the data. What kind of information the customers are coming into a bank, right? I know that because I see that. Like for example, most of the people are coming into the bank and they're taking a uh, what we say overdraft within a week's time of the day account opening 
right? Overdraft is something where you can use the funds beyond your balance limit. Okay, to put in a very very simpler and easier way. Yeah. yeah? Where, for example, your balance, let's say your balance is only thousand rupees, but you can use another five hundred as well. Yeah. So even if your balance is zero, you still can use your card for another five hundred rupees. Yeah. Right? That's the five hundred is called overdraft for you. Okay. So we see that most of the business who come into the come into the banks, they want to take money because they want funds to invest into their into their businesses. And when they come in, they within the weeks of their account opening, they are going for this overdraft, meaning they are utilizing all the balance. They're taking it, they're eating it up, and then they're going for the additional funds as well. So that means there is a shortage of funds in the market. So they need money to invest Run into the their. Process, yeah. Correct. So, so I know because I see the data. So, if that is given to me, we would go to the customer base directly, saying that no, see, this is what we can offer you. Instead of giving a balance of thousand, based on my six months data, I see that you know, it's not enough. They are going for additional funds. So, I will increase that balance amount to two thousand. Let's say. That way, my overdrafts are coming down, and they can still use the. They are still with me. and i will charge an interest as well so i'll i'm getting money from the interest right this is one more thing this is all coming out of the pure data that is there in my hand if we don't have the data it's all in the air like someone tells me that no okay i think we need to do something but yeah how to substantiate that yeah. you give me the data how you prove and i also think now that we are in a data driven world taking decisions without data will be a blunder blunder and it is the worst thing you can do first of all nobody takes that risk okay yeah. let's say for example you need if you're putting an idea to someone like if you're going uh, to a seminar or somewhere where you're pitching an idea right and you want we we let me tell you a story right we have something called war rooms in our commercial world in hsbc yeah yeah i know right the war room is right so yeah. every last friday of a month we have a war room for 2 hours straight away everybody calendars will be blocked for 2 hours everybody will come to that war room okay it's just open war room you can talk any 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 crap in that meet okay you so it's more like you know throwing your ideas you you come up with an idea in that war room you just, you tell us that no i think this is if you do this this is the advantage that we have it it is an opportunity as a, for example if i own a company it's an opportunity for me as well to see where i can improve right we need to work really smart to see get you know bring down that additional effort that we put but we'll still get the results that we are getting right now so that war rooms what happens is everybody comes with their idea they pitch in their idea right but the one who comes with an idea along with the data which supports his idea they are the ones who get that time or you know the attention that they need right because you're not just telling the idea that you know okay i think if you build uh, like for example our nad flyover right instead of having that what if you would have this you know instead of having a common point like a circle that we have in nad junction i think it would have been better to have like you know uh, like uh, flyovers like this where the ones who are coming from simacharam they can go straight the ones who are coming from simacharam going towards the city can go left so, so separate roads right instead of having one common point where obviously it is not helping where our traffic is getting jammed so that's an idea oh yeah it's on the if on the sound the way paper it is projected it, it sounds very good but if you put it on a paper like what is the cost required budget. when you do how the much how, what, correct when it then the, when you put the numbers out of it then you would know whether it is viable or not right so that is the magic of the data if you use the data in the right way it is supposed to like i was telling right if you portray a right story with the data that you have you can get the attention from your stakeholders and you can get the required funds if you put it in a right way right for that your analysis would help so you should know what to do with your data because the way you analyze and you know the perspective that you have and the perspective uh, the way i look at the data might be different yeah obviously okay. right yeah. but the way you look at the things might be different and when we talk to each other that's when we would know okay oh wow so why is it that i didn't think in that yeah. perspective 
and the data was right in front of you always it yeah. was there with you every time like let's say for example you have the last two years data in front of you what is it that you need to do with that what what is it that you can do and especially with the startups right this is very very crucial you should be stable in the game mm-hmm. and you should try to expand and you know go beyond that and how do you do it if you don't have proper these are the very small rows which i think you know what will happen is the startups feel that you know they they are overpaying but it is worth each penny right if you write if you have the right people at the right time in the right positions it will help the organization Uh, running late and especially in today's IPL final. Uh, IPL, oh, I okay, okay. IPL final. Uh, if you are free, we'll have a session next week where we finish up. Yeah, before. anytime on a weekend. You let's do one thing. Probably you can connect with all your folks, and if there are any interesting questions that you that they think that to just get a different perspective, what what is it that I think from my experience would. So, how would i look at those things or any scenarios anything of that sort if you can collate it yeah i'm fine to get on another session and probably we can uh, talk about it as well uh, uh, so anything you have to uh, 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 anything you have for me any advices any piece of uh, information do you want to hear it right now with everyone in or do you want to have it in one to one Your so because I, I always believe that you no know, good should be uh, no, any positive thing should be said in front of everyone. But there are few things that you definitely see. Not only you, right? Even me. Like, again, coming out to first point, everybody can learn from can learn from anyone, right? So I can learn a lot of things from you as well. Like if I when I was at your age, I was just roaming around playing cricket and probably watching movies. But you have. you have the interest you have the skills you have the resources you have your laptop you have your internet this is not how it was back when when we were no, young right yeah, no. yeah. it's not that i'm old now but i'm just saying that you know back in our college days it was not this robust you know this exposure was not there yeah. probably if it was there it would have been a different story with different most story. of us yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so you you are in that phase so yeah i would like to say that you no know, this is very good thing that you guys doing especially you the because i have seen you how you evolved from a small kid uh, and you know the the interest zones that you have evolved the way you you learn quickly you see where the potential is you know what are your strengths trust me that is a big asset in you know uh, for any youngster to know your capability to know your strength much much earlier in your life makes lot of difference for a successful person right if you know that you are good at coding if you know that you are good at analyzing data if you know you are good at presenting something like a marketing guy right i have a friend who's very good at marketing i never i never have that perspective that you know it's it's all it's important unless you market it yourself that you know this is what you do you will not you will not get the opportunities it, right now the things are that you need to create opportunities you you shouldn't be waiting for the opportunities yeah. yes for that to come you have to have the right exposure so yeah coming to the point you you are in a very good direction because like i said you know your what your strengths are you're working on your strengths you are doing things which are which are in line to your strengths so keep doing that and learn learn a lot of things try to see what are the tools that will help you uh, in 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 this kind of world like right? what is it that for example if you want to build your career in business analytics like understand how world works what is it that they need to do of course you it'll be easy for you to understand what they do but what is it that you can do something different from others right that's how because you have time i think i think you are less than 20 21. you are 22 23 21. 21 what the hell i'm 37 so you can imagine what you can do or what where you will be by the time you are 35 yeah. right 14 years 15 years from now my god i can i can't just imagine so all the very best i think you're doing very very well there are a lot of things that you can still do yeah but don't stop anything because they're all these are all good things that even if the frequency of this can be reduced if if you need to concentrate if you if there is something else that needs your time 
but you still do it at least once in a month or twice in a month do whatever you so one suggestion i have is you know you love you if you are if you pick pick something which is your hobby as a profession right you will cherish right you will just the best comes out of you automatically the creativity comes out of because if because you are loving what you are doing there are may, there may be few many people who might not you know they're just there because they they need to have that end of the month okay. income that they need yeah because of situations and all but i, I don't think i don't say that you know, it's easy for anyone or lucky for anyone that you know they are in a profession where they love like i have a friend who loves gaming right and he is a game tester so right. you can imagine yeah. he works for ea in hyderabad ea sports yeah yeah i know he is he, yeah he's a game tester there so he 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 was just into games since i know him and now he is actually in a career where it's just in line to his interests and hobbies so you can see where he can go right so yeah. that's the best part of it so he loves games and he's in the gaming industry and they wo- and he'll be paid for playing games so you can can you beat that so yeah. that's how it is so yeah i know it's time so uh, like i said uh, this i'm very happy that i got this opportunity and uh, very very happy to see you get you know being evolved like this like i said keep doing uh, i am very very happy for you and please do let me know if there is anything that i can be of help like you always know i i i you know i it it i might not be of great help but at least i can give you contacts or some context to it when if i know something right so very happy for you and all the very best thank you thank you for joining us today thank you for taking your time i know business analysis is a busy no not only that uh, i'm sorry if uh, you know uh, you had to reschedule this as well not only today i think we had to catch up last time right so yeah. uh, this is for everyone's right so i'm uh, this is my new role like i said i have picked up uh, probably 6 7 months back so i'm learning again so i have to be a pro in this i like how was i i became pro in i thought i think that i became you know it was monotonous now for testing so that's how i picked up ba so i have to be in that position in like in you know, a year's time so i'm you know my most of the time is going there yeah. second thing is i have a 15 month old son so and like my wife is also joined hsbc recently so she's also working so managing a 15 month old boy specifically like you all know boys are very naughty and they are very very hype you know active ones so they need our attention yeah so most of the time is going in managing that guy and my work and also again coming up with our 30 day 60 day 90 day plans yeah. so i'm you know pretty much occupied so which is good fun right so yeah we will we'll speak again soon yeah. so once we have that list of questions or whatever you might want to discuss probably i'll stop talking less from next time <laughs> on the next sure. session Fine. and we will relate more to the questions and answers yeah yeah but then answering the questions without the context will be meaningless yeah that's what i i feel that's why I, i told you right earlier in that i might talk a little because unless you give the background story i we will lose the interest of the audience or whoever is actually listening to so we need to get that attention so thank you we'll catch up next week no problem sure okay, goodbye everyone cheers bye bye